Hey guys, it's Marianne from Thrive and thank you for coming over to my channel. In this video today, I'm going to be showing you how you can share your Microsoft Forms with other people, both internal, uh, so in your organization, in your department that you work with under the same domain, and then people who are external, so clients or contacts or leads or collaborators and subcontractors. And we're going to cover two ways you can share, sharing in terms of being able to get people to fill in the form, the completed form for you, but also sharing from the back end so that you can have other people administer the form for you and make edits and be able to review the data in the background. So let's get started. Alrighty, so the first step is that we need to get into Microsoft Forms. So today I'm working on my PC, but I'm using Microsoft Edge as my web browser. If you are using a Mac or you're using a different web browser, this will be exactly the same process for you because Forms is a completely web-based program. So in our web browser, we are heading to forms.office.com. You can, of course, go through office.com main page, your home page, and head to the app launcher and find forms. Now, in this video, we're not going to be creating a form. We're just going to work on one that already exists. So I am going to open this one. We'll open in a new tab. So you've built your form. You've put together all of your headings, sections, branching. It's all ready to go. So the next stage is that we want to be able to share it. Now, there are two types of sharing that you can do within Microsoft Forms. The first one is to share in terms of collecting responses, so getting people to complete the form. And the second type is sharing in terms of collaborating with people so that they can actually edit and view the results. So it's having people who are working on the back end of the form with you. So we're gonna look at both of those. The first one, we're looking, we've decided it's built and ready. I just wanna get it out into the world. Then we head to the collect responses button up here. And there are four different ways that you can choose to collect responses. And that's on this right hand side. We'll have a look at the left in a second. But the first part we want to talk about is the ways that we can share this form. So you can start by simply sharing a direct hyperlink. Now, this is really handy for popping into emails. If you're building landing pages or web pages on another program and you want to make a button, then you would do it with this link. If you want to create customized redirects so you want to have a, a pretty hyperlink that might have your domain in it slash form slash feedback slash onboarding whatever you might call it you can do that with this link you can also use it when you're creating social media posts and that means that you can pop it in as the link in a social media post on programs like linkedin or facebook it will sometimes shorten them other times it won't so the link itself is very long. Be aware of that. And you have the option, of course, to shorten it here. And that will make it still not pretty, but manageable for things like social media posts or in emails if you want to keep it simple. And you simply copy that link and you can paste it anywhere you like. And when you do, people will be taken directly to the front page of your form in their web browser and they'll be able to start completing it for you. The second option is our direct invitation. And this happens via Outlook or you can do it in Teams as well. You'll see at the bottom, you'll have the option here. And here we're able to send it to individual people who are in our list. So I can actually send it to contacts generally. So I can be very, very specific about who I send it to. I can send it to groups. So if I have a group set up as a SharePoint group or an Outlook group. I can send it to everybody in there. I can also send it to some of my chats. So if I have a public chat space or a group chat space, I can create those and it will go into the chat window. And then I can also pop it into the post page on a channel. And this is handy if you've got people who are you want to keep everything inside Teams, you can pop the link in there directly. Again, with this, you can customize it. So it gives you this standard text, but you can go back in and it'll, and you can edit it. You can't do any formatting with that text though. It's just about typing and popping it in. And then uh, you can choose whether it goes into Teams as well, or if it just goes into Teams as a message and then uh, hit send and the person will receive that invite. That button there will take them straight to the form. 
Our third option, which is the one that's really popular when you're working from a mobile device, is to scan and send the QR code. So you can send the QR code directly, you can download it, and then you can pop it on a landing page, you can pop it in a social media post, you could send it in a text message, and it's going to work for people so that they can simply use their phone or scan it with their phone or tablet and be able to access the form. You can also keep it as an image on your phone. So if you're face to face with someone, you can say, oh, here, scan this, and then that's the form. So that's another option. It's also the same QR code that you will have on your live present mode. So if you're presenting the data, it's feeding everybody into that same form. So you can either share it individually with people, you could have it printed on a table at a presentation, but also have it up on the screen at the same time. And the last option is our copy and paste uh, iframe. So this is to embed into a web page. Now you can see here it says on a web page or a sway page, which is Microsoft's static landing page slash newsletter type program. And it's an iframe. So it's the same as if you were embedding a contact form or a YouTube video or any kind of video into a web page. And it means that it's sitting in the page itself. You're not redirecting them back into forms. They'll complete it, hit submit in that same page and the data will come into your form. On the left-hand side, we're just gonna very quickly look at how we can respond. These are the standard options that we have in a lot of our Microsoft programs. So you can have that anyone can respond, which means that it's an anonymous response. They don't need a Microsoft account and you can share it as far and wide as you like. Here it will be only people in, and this here where it says my name obviously won't say that for you. It will be whatever your domain or organisation is called. And you'll need to, the, the people completing the form will need to sign in in order to validate their access. Now, by doing that, it means that you will, you can choose to record their name or not, and you can also decide whether they're allowed to complete the form once or multiple times. And then we can drill down even further. So you might have an organisation that has a lot of people in it. And then you might say, I don't want everyone in the organisation. It might just be this group or these particular people or this very specific person. It's a form that has been created for this person. Uh, and again, this is the next level down. So you're specifying that very distinct group. Again, here it would be names, groups, email addresses, and it will pick it up because it's inside your organization. So these two are internal. This one allows it to go far and wide. Now, the other option that we have when we're talking about sharing our forms is sharing at the back end of the form or the admin side so that you can have someone who can physically create and edit the questions and the answers that you've put together and can see the results. Now, this is really handy if you have someone that you're working with to manage the data or if you're working with a form that might be used across different teams or divisions in an organisation or with subcontractors and collaborators who are helping you run your admin, the admin side of your business. So if we want to do that, we don't want to look at those collect responses side. We want to look at being able to collaborate. And to do that, we head up to the ellipsis here where we've got more settings and we go to collaborate or duplicate. And here we can then add collaborators. So you can see, again, we've got three options and they're the same. They are literally the same as what we do when we're sharing the form for people to complete. So it's anybody with an Office 365 work or school account can log in uh, or can edit and view the result. Obviously, they need to have their own account to be able to open this up and see it. Then you can refine down and you can say, no, I only want people in my organisation. And that would be everybody in your organisation will be able to access it with the link. And then this one is that third more restricted access where you're specifying exactly who those people are. Now, again, it will give you a link and you would copy that and then send that in a text message, an email, a Teams message, uh, however you're communicating or working with that person, you can put it in that space and it will just be a direct hyperlink for you. have it. The four
four key ways that you can share your completed Microsoft form with people so that they can provide responses as a hyperlink by email, as a QR code, as a direct invitation via Outlook or Teams, or as an embedded form on a web page. We've also looked at how you can share the back end access of your Microsoft form, and you can do that as a direct hyperlink and restrict which levels of access you're going to provide. So I hope that you found this really, really helpful. If you are looking for more support when it comes to Microsoft Forms, then please get in touch. There are loads of ways that I can help you to get started. And I would love to chat all things Microsoft with you. If you've got any specific questions about the content I've shared in this video, then you can comment here or you can find me hanging out on Facebook, LinkedIn, TikTok and Instagram. Just search for Thrive Admin Services. Cheers.